Prince Eugene of Savoy was a general of the Imperial Army and statesman of the Holy Roman Empire and the Archduchy of Austria and one of the most successful military commanders in modern European history, rising to the highest offices of state at the Imperial Court in Vienna. Born in Paris, Eugene grew up around the French court of King Louis XIV. Based on his poor physique and bearing, the prince was initially prepared for a career in the church, but by the age of 19 he had determined on a military career. Rejected by Louis XIV for service in the French army, Eugene moved to Austria and transferred his loyalty to the Habsburg monarchy. Spanning six decades, Eugene served three Holy Roman Emperors, Leopold I, Joseph I, and Charles VI. He first saw action against the Ottoman Turks at the Siege of Vienna in 1683 and the subsequent War of the Holy League, before serving in the Nine Years' War, fighting alongside his cousin, the Duke of Savoy. However, the prince's fame was secured with his decisive victory against the Ottomans at the Battle of Zenta in 1697, earning him Europe-wide fame. Eugene enhanced his standing during the War of the Spanish Succession, where his partnership with the Duke of Marlborough secured victories against the French on the fields of Blenheim, Oudenard, and Malplaquet. He gained further success in the war as imperial commander in northern Italy, most notably at the Battle of Turin. Renewed hostilities against the Ottomans in the Austro-Turkish War consolidated his reputation, with victories at the battles of Petrovaradin, and the decisive encounter at Belgrade. Throughout the late 1720s, Eugene's influence and skillful diplomacy managed to secure the emperor powerful allies in his dynastic struggles with the Bourbon powers. But physically and mentally fragile in his later years, Eugene enjoyed less success as commander-in-chief of the army during his final conflict, the War of the Polish Succession. Nevertheless, in Austria, Eugene's reputation remains unrivaled. Although opinions differ as to his character, there is no dispute over his great achievements. He helped to save the Habsburg Empire from French conquest, he broke the westward thrust of the Ottomans, liberating Central Europe after a century and a half of Turkish occupation, and he was one of the great patrons of the arts whose building legacy can still be seen in Vienna today. Eugene died in his sleep at his home on 21 April 1736, aged 72. Early Life Hotel de Soissons Prince Eugene was born in the Hotel de Soissons in Paris on 18 October 1663. His mother, Olympia Mancini, was one of Cardinal Mazarin's nieces whom he had brought to Paris from Rome in 1647 to further his, and to a lesser extent, their ambitions. The Mancinis were raised at the Palais Royal along with the young Louis XIV, with whom Olympia formed an intimate relationship. Yet to her great disappointment, her chance to become queen passed by, and in 1657, Olympia married Eugene Morris, Count of Soissons, Count of Drone Prince of Savoy. Together they had had five sons and three daughters, but neither parent spent much time with the children. His father, a brave, unglamorous French soldier, spent much of his time away campaigning. While Olympia's passion for court intrigue meant the children received little attention from her, the king remained strongly attached to Olympia, so much so that many believed them to be lovers, but her scheming eventually led to her downfall. After falling out of favor at court, Olympia turned to Catherine de Chaise and the arts of black magic and astrology. It was a fatal relationship. Embroiled in the affair des poisons, suspicions now abounded of her involvement in her husband's premature death in 1673, and even implicated her in a plot to kill the king himself. Whatever the truth, Olympia, rather than face trial, subsequently fled France for Brussels in January 1680. 
leaving Eugene in the care of his father's mother, Marie de Bourbon, and her daughter, hereditary Princess of Baden, mother of Prince Louis of Baden. From the age of 10, Eugene had been brought up for a career in the church, a personal choice of the king, basing the decision on the young prince's poor physique and bearing. Certainly Eugene's appearance was not impressive, he was never good-looking, wrote the Duchess of Orleans. It is true that his eyes are not ugly, but his nose ruins his face. He has two large teeth which are visible at all times. In February 1683, to the surprise of his family, Eugene declared his intention of joining the army. Now 19 years old, Eugene applied directly to Louis XIV for command of a company in French service. But the king, who had shown no compassion for Olympia's children since her disgrace, refused him out of hand. The request was modest, not so the petitioner, he remarked. No one else ever presumed to stare me out so insolently. Denied a military career in France, Eugene decided to seek service abroad. One of Eugene's brothers, Louis Julius, had entered imperial service the previous year, but he had been immediately killed fighting the Ottoman Turks in 1683. When news of his death reached Paris, Eugene decided to travel to Austria in the hope of taking over his brother's command. It was not an unnatural decision. His cousin, Louis of Baden, was already a leading general in the imperial army, as was a more distant cousin, Maximilian II Emmanuel, elector of Bavaria. On the night of July 26, 1683, Eugene left Paris and headed east. Great Turkish War By May 1683, the Ottoman threat to Emperor Leopold I's capital, Vienna, was very real. The Grand Vizier, Kara Mustafa Pasha, encouraged by Imrath Okli's Magyar rebellion, had invaded Hungary with between 100,000 minus 200,000 men within two months. Approximately 90,000 were beneath Vienna's walls. With the Turks at the gates, the emperor fled for the safe refuge of Hasor up the Danube, a more distant and secure part of his dominion. It was at Leopold I's camp that Eugene arrived in mid-August. Although Eugene was not of Austrian extraction, he did have Habsburg antecedents. His grandfather, Thomas Francis, founder of the Carignano line of the House of Savoy, was the son of Catherine Michel, a daughter of Philip II of Spain, and the great-grandson of the Emperor Charles V. But of more immediate consequence to Leopold I was the fact that Eugene was the second cousin of Victor Amadeus, the Duke of Savoy, a connection that the Emperor hoped might prove useful in any future confrontation with France. These ties, together with his ascetic manner and appearance, ensured the refugee from the hated French king a warm welcome at Passau, and a position in imperial service. Though French was his favoured language, he communicated with Leopold in Italian as the emperor disliked French. But Eugene all also had a reasonable command of German, which he understood very easily, something that helped him much in the military. Eugene was in no doubt where his new allegiance lay. I will devote all my strength, all my courage, and if need be, my last drop of blood, to the service of your imperial majesty. This loyalty was immediately put to the test. By September, the imperial forces under the Duke of Lorraine, together with a powerful Polish army under King John III Sobieski, were poised to strike the Sultan's army. On the morning of 12 September, the Christian forces drew up in line of battle on the southeastern slopes of the Vienna woods. Looking down on the massed enemy camp, the day-long battle of Vienna resulted in the lifting of the 60-day siege, and the Sultan's forces were routed and in retreat. Serving under Baden, Eugene distinguished himself in the battle, earning commendation from Lorraine and the Emperor. He later received the nomination for the colonelcy of the Dragoon Regiment Kufstein. Holy League In March 1684, Leopold I formed the Holy League with Poland and Venice to counter the Ottoman threat. 
For the next two years, Eugene continued to perform with distinction on campaign and establish himself as a dedicated professional soldier. By the end of 1685, still only 22 years old, he was made a major general. However, little is known of Eugene's life during these early campaigns. Contemporary observers make only passing comments of his actions, and his own surviving correspondence, largely to his cousin Victor Amadeus, are typically reticent about his own feelings and experiences. Nevertheless, it is clear that Baden was impressed with Eugene's qualities, this young man will, with time, occupy the place of those whom the world regards as great leaders of armies. In June 1686, the Duke of Lorraine besieged Buda, the center of the Ottoman occupation in Hungary. After resisting for 78 days, the city fell on 2 September, and Turkish resistance collapsed throughout the region as far away as Transylvania and Serbia. Further success followed in 1687, where, commanding a cavalry brigade, Eugene made an important contribution to the victory at the Battle of Mohacs on 12 August. Such was the scale of their defeat that the Ottoman army mutinied, a revolt which spread to Constantinople. The Grand Vizier, Suleiman Pasha, was executed and Sultan Mehmed IV deposed. Once again, Eugene's courage earned him recognition from his superiors, who granted him the honor of personally conveying the news of victory to the emperor in Vienna. For his services, Eugene was promoted to Lieutenant General in November 1687. He was also gaining wider recognition. King Charles II of Spain bestowed upon him the Order of the Golden Fleece, while his cousin, Victor Amadeus, provided him with money and two profitable abbeys in Piedmont. However, Eugene's military career suffered a temporary setback in 1688 when, on 6 September, the prince suffered a severe wound to his knee by a musket ball during the siege of Belgrade. It was not until January 1689 that he could return to active service. Interlude in the West Nine years' war just as Belgrade was falling to imperial forces under Maxim Manuel in the East. French troops in the west were crossing the Rhine into the Holy Roman Empire. Louis XIV had hoped that a show of force would lead to a quick resolution to his dynastic and territorial disputes with the princes of the empire, along his eastern border. But his intimidatory moves only strengthened German resolve, and in May 1689, Leopold I and the Dutch signed an offensive compact aimed at repelling French aggression. The Nine Years' War was professionally and personally frustrating for the prince, initially fighting on the Rhine with Max Emmanuel, receiving a slight head wound at the Siege of Mainz in 1689 Eugene subsequently transferred himself to Piedmont after Victor Amadeus joined the alliance against France in 1690. Promoted to General of Cavalry, he arrived in Turin with his friend, the Prince of Commerce, but it proved an inauspicious start. Against Eugene's advice, Amadeus insisted on engaging the French at Staffada and suffered a serious defeat. Only Eugene's handling of the Savoyard cavalry in retreat saved his cousin from disaster. Eugene remained unimpressed with the men and their commanders throughout the war in Italy. The enemy would long ago have been beaten, he wrote to Vienna, if everyone had done that duty, so contemptuous was he of the imperial commander, Count Carafa, he threatened to leave imperial service. In Vienna, Eugene's attitude was dismissed as the arrogance of a young upstart. But so impressed was the emperor by his passion for the imperial cause, he promoted him to field marshal in 1693, when Carafa's replacement, Count Capra, was himself transferred in 1694. It seemed that Eugene's chance for command and decisive action had finally arrived. But Amadeus, doubtful of victory and now more fearful of Habsburg influence in Italy than he was of French, had begun secret dealings with Louis XIV aimed at extricating himself from the war. By 1696, the deal was done, and Amadeus transferred his troops and his loyalty to the enemy. 
Eugene was never to fully trust his cousin again, although he continued to pay due reference to the Duke as head of his family. Their relationship would forever after remain strained. Military honours in Italy undoubtedly belonged to the French commander Marshal Catanate, but Eugene, the one Allied general determined on action and decisive results, did well to emerge from the Nine Years' War with an enhanced reputation. With the signing of the Treaty of Ryswick in September, October 1697, the desultory war in the West was finally brought to an inconclusive end, and Leopold I could once again devote all his martial energies into defeating the Ottoman Turks in the East. Center the distractions of the war against Louis XIV had enabled the Turks to recapture Belgrade in 1690. In August 1691, the Austrians, under Louis of Baden, regained the advantage by heavily defeating the Turks at the Battle of Slankerman on the Danube, securing Habsburg possession of Hungary and Transylvania. However, when Baden was transferred west to fight the French in 1692, his successors, first Capra, then from 1696, Frederick Augustus, the elector of Saxony, proved incapable of delivering the final blow. This was Eugene's first truly independent command. No longer need he suffer under the excessively cautious generalship of Capra and Carafa, or be thwarted by the deviations of Victor Amadeus. But on joining his army, he found it in a state of indescribable misery. Confident and self-assured, the Prince of Savoy set about restoring order and discipline. Leopold I had warned Eugene to act cautiously, but when the imperial commander learnt of Sultan Mustafa II's march on Transylvania, Eugene abandoned all ideas of a defensive campaign and moved to intercept the Turks as they crossed the River Tissa at Zenta on the 11th of September 1697. It was late in the day before the Imperial Army struck. The Turkish cavalry had already crossed the river so Eugene decided to attack immediately, arranging his men in a half-moon formation. The vigor of the assault wrought terror and confusion amongst the Turks, and by nightfall, the battle was won. For the loss of some 2,000 dead and wounded, Eugene had inflicted approximately 25,000 casualties on his enemy, including the Grand Vizier, Elmas Mehmed Pasha, annihilating the Turkish army. Although the Ottomans lacked Western organization and training, the Savoyard prince had revealed his tactical skill, his capacity for bold decision, and his ability to inspire his men to excel in battle against a dangerous foe. After a brief terror raid into Ottoman-held Bosnia, culminating in the sack of Sarajevo, Eugene returned to Vienna in November to a triumphal reception. His victory at Zenta had turned him into a European hero, and with victory came reward. Land in Hungary, given him by the emperor, yielded a good income, enabling the prince to cultivate his newly acquired tastes in art and architecture, but for all his newfound wealth and property, he was, nevertheless, without personal ties or family commitments. Of his four brothers, only one was still alive at this time. His fourth brother, Emmanuel, had died aged 14 in 1676. His third, Louis Julius, had died on active service in 1683, and his second brother, Philippe, died of smallpox in 1693. Eugene's remaining brother, Louis Thomas, ostracized for incurring the displeasure of Louis XIV, traveled Europe in search of a career. Before arriving in Vienna in 1699, with Eugene's help, Louis found employment in the Imperial Army, only to be killed in action against the French in 1702. Of Eugene's sisters, the youngest had died in childhood. The other two, Marie-Jean Baptiste and Louise Philibeta, led dissolute lives. Expelled from France, Marie joined her mother in Brussels before eloping with a renegade priest to Geneva, living with him unhappily until her premature death in 1705. If Louise, little is known after her early salacious life in Paris, but in due course, she lived for a time in a convent in Savoy before her death in 1726. The Battle of Zenta proved to be the decisive victory in the long war against the Turks.
With Leopold I's interests now focused on Spain and the imminent death of Charles II, the emperor terminated the conflict with the sultan, and signed the Treaty of Karlowitz on 26 January 1699.